Hi everyone, welcome back to RTS and welcome back to, you guessed it, Layout Lunch Date. Yes, that's what we're going to talk about during this lunchtime today. I hope your lunch break is going well. I hope you're getting something scrappy <laughs> related in your day. Even if that means just snapping a photo or thinking about your next layout. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, I think about scrapbooking every day, honestly and truly. So in our last layout lunch date, I had talked about my goal of putting away seven and journaling on seven. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. And then part two of our layout lunch date is what we're going to talk about today is the unfinished layouts, why they give us problems, why they give us the headaches and why they stay in a pile. <laughs> And we don't want to address them. So we're actually going to tackle that topic. Now, some of my subscribers had said, they had asked that when I go to put the layouts away, could I do a little bit of a flip through of the layouts that I have in my pile that I'm going to address during our layout lunch date. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to talk a little bit about actually putting layouts away in my process of how I go about doing that. Now, I will have to say... In my fantasy world, I would have two or three days and I had nothing else to do other than sit on the floor and put all of my finished layouts in a pile by year and then within months of that year. Because that is exactly how I put away my layouts. I put them by year. I have a album for each year or sometimes two or three albums for that year. And then within that, I have them chronologically by month loosely. I do not get fanatic about that. And so this is one of those examples where this is a two page layout. Now all of these layouts are from the same year of 2012 and that's where I'm going to put them in the album that is labeled 2012. And we're going to talk about labeling albums in another in a future layout lunch date. So this one, I just have a year. I do not have a month because it spans several months of the year. And so what do you do with a layout when it spans several months? Which month do you put it in? And for me, what I have done over the years is I know it's going to go in my 2012 album, so that's not hard. And then I look at my mood and feel once again and I think where would this where would this look good in the album and so for me this would land in June July or August because it reminds me of the summer because of the colors I use so that's what I would do now when I'm putting away uh, the layout so what I have the same process I do every time and so what I do is I give it the bend test I see if anything is popping up or something's not adhered the best and I'll just give it a little dab of my quick dry and just make sure that everything is secure okay and then the other thing I do is I make sure all of my brads are covered now a lot of you will know that brads is my favorite embellishment bar none and I will cover the prongs of my brad on the back with washi tape so these these two things are by my side and I just use washi tape I'm not crazy about and those two are by my side when I'm in the process of putting layouts away okay and I'll talk about these layouts in just a minute and then I also have one other thing that I keep by my side when I'm putting layouts away and that is also to a cleaning cloth and so what I do is in a quick manner I will go ahead and I will wipe off my photos right before I put in a page protector because I have handled this and handled this and moved it and moved it and so I just like to give them a quick little uh, run through with that cleaning cloth because I'm the type of person that once my page or once my layouts go into page protectors they're staying in that page protector unless I have to bring them out now some of these layouts you may see coming up in our go-to designs because I'm going to be pulling out samples which has created another pile for me because I'm pulling out layouts but it's just all process and it's all fun so let's enjoy all of it so I'm going to do a quick flip through of these 17 layouts that I'm putting away today and then I will come back and uh, you know in a little bit and then we'll talk about part two so my first layout here is a title a layout titled Mrs. Beaker and she's a little figurine we bring out in the fall and my daughter found it one day she has something for all things that are broke and need repaired you know she's a soft heart like that and so she does not have a beak she's missing her beak and so we called her Mrs. Beaker and we lovingly bring her out every fall yes cute little story on that <clears throat> excuse me and then this is a two-page layout of my uh, little one when she was in the selfie stage and so I just did them in a film strip sense how many did I get on here four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty two one two 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 three four I think there's about 26 photos on that two-page spread. Hello, come to mama, sign me up. Love that. Yes, and then I just added washi to uh, give that little bit of a photo, you know, the film strip type of thing. Love that. So when someone sends you selfies or photos, keep every single one of them and then just put them all together on a two-page spread. 
Now, I also have another two-page spread, and this is like a grid fashion type of collage type thing when it comes to photos. Love doing this. And I think there's uh, what did they, about 12 photos. This is just fall decorations inside and out. Love that. Very, very simple. This is an absolutely good way to use paper scraps and border strips on a two-page spread. So love that. Of course, you know, breads. Got to get my breads on there. And then when you're dealing with fall, don't forget to bring out the, break out the wood veneer. I've talked about that in our 4 for 4 series. Again, get that texture in. Now, here is a two-page spread. I really do not care for this pe paper collection by Echo Park. And I wish I would have realized this about me a few years ago. I do not like kind of like dark, distressed papers. So it's something I've paid attention to when I buy fall lines now. But I wanted to show this because Thanksgiving will be here in just a few weeks. Can you believe that? No. I mean, it's time to think about getting a turkey. Honestly, that's crazy. And so I wanted to show this. So when Thanksgiving rolls around, holiday and prep rolls around, don't forget to snap photos of your cookbooks, your family recipes, and then also to have someone take a photo of you doing food prep. Even if you don't have no makeup on, who cares? It doesn't matter. Don't even get your face. Just do your hands. And so there is a photo my daughter snapped of me making some pies because I make a lot of pies. And so uh, that is me working the dough. And so, so glad I asked her to snap that for me. Of course, family shots never go wrong with that. And then also, too, if you sent out cards for the holidays, regardless of what it is, take a photo of your holidays or your cards because you'll never remember. But it's nice to see what I sent out for Thanksgiving. And then, of course, you know, if you have a favorite family dish that you make here, we make sausage balls, of course, pies, and then all kinds of food prep. And then the turkey in the oven. Okay. Now, my husband calls our turkey every single year. He calls it yard bird. And he always says, is the yard bird in the oven? And honestly, I need to write that down and do that story because every single year he calls it yard bird. I have no idea why. He just calls it the yard bird. So that's cute. I need to write that down. And then also, too, homemade noodles I make, things like that. And so don't forget that when you're doing holiday layouts and taking holiday photos, not everything has to have a person in it. No, people are good, but also too, holiday sometimes is a lot of prep. So it's good to just snap those kind of photos. Now, this is the layout I wanted to talk about because this layout is another two page layout. Sorry, I just hit a light there. <laughs> And this is a two-page layout of a day trip, again, back in Amish land. We spent a lot of time there. And so then this was just a day trip, but I had more photos than what a two-page layout did. And I wanted to talk about this because this is also something you're going to see coming up on the channel is inserts. And so you'd say, well, what's an insert? I'm glad you asked. An insert is when I have a two-page layout from a trip or a day or event, whatever, but yet I still have some more photos I want to include, but I don't want to invest the time or the supplies and another two page layout. So what I'll do is I create an insert and an insert for me is basically a 12 by 12 piece of paper cut in half <laughs> and it's a six by 12. And so there's a front and then there's a back. And then what I'll do is I will absolutely insert them in between this two page layout. And when I come back for part two, I will show you what that looks like in my album because what I'm going to do here and I'll just pull this out is that I actually have my page protectors in albums and I'll have the video listed below shows that shows how I organize my page protectors and I will come and just grab one of these six by 12. These are by Becky Higgins and I believe that, well, I know they're still available. And so I'll have the link below if you're interested in looking at them. I just get them from Amazon, but I don't know if you can still find them at Michael's. I know Michael's is uh, kind of doing away with this project, a uh, lifeline project lifeline. <laughs> Project Life Collection. I think they're doing away with that. But I'll have that video linked below. And so I just have my page protectors in albums to keep them organized. And so then what I will simply do is take this 6x12 and I will put it uh, in this 6x12 page protector. And, and I'll show you what that looks like when we come back. Okay. And so then I have a layout with a comparison. Love comparison shots. And so this photo is in 2005. And then in 2012, in the exact same spot, it's amazing to see how fast your kids grow. Love comparison layouts. Here is a holiday two-page spread. Just holiday decor inside and out. Got a banner in. Yes, some twine. Love, love. You know, have to get my braids in. Love that. Oh, yes. And it's going to be time for decorating soon. <laughs> it takes away. And I tell you what, holidays take a lot of prep. But 
it makes for nice photos <laughs> yes okay and so then this was a grid type uh, layout which we'll be talking about in our go-to designs using some six with six papers and then also two uh, faux chipboard I'll have the video link below if you're interested in making some faux chipboard I made those buttons yes and then now here is a block design which we'll talk about that coming up with a diagonal embellishment design and so this was when my little girl spied Michael Jackson's uh, handprints over at Hollywood Studios one day. That was fun. She was excited about that. This is another six by six paper pad grid type of layout with uh, film strips. Love doing photos. You can get, what, three? There are just 10 photos on a one page spread. On a one page layout, 10 photos. Of course, they're smaller, but I did them in a film strip, so they can be smaller. Love that. And I called this Slice of Life. And this really was just a time, a short period of time. I'm not sure the month. I wonder if I have that on the back. No, I'm not sure what it is, but it was just a recap of things that was going on in my daughter's life at the time. Love that. Now, also, I have another two page spread. Now, this is a problem sometimes I run into when I'm putting layouts away and I have to sit here and think, OK, well, which way did I have this intended? OK, and so sometimes you have to pay attention as to directional elements because then it'll be a cue because what I'll do is I'll look if I have arrows and I know I was telling myself to look for you know look that way so that I know that's on the right page and then I have a heavy photo and that is usually on my left so now this is another example of a layout where there's no people okay I love snapping photos and I don't have a single person sometimes and so I just take close-ups of everything that reminds me of fall did some stamping I did some inking I don't do a lot of inking on pages but this one called for it and so that is that two page spread and I'll put that away so I think all in all when this is all done this will be about 17 layouts, okay? And so, again, this whole pile is done. I just need to simply put them in my album. And so, of course, these are the three things I have by my side when I am working on putting my layouts away. I simply just do not put them in a page protector. I make sure they're adhered down. The brads are covered, but it'll be easier to go in a page protector. And I actually wipe my photos, okay? Because this is the very last step before they go in a page protector. Because once my layouts are in a page protector, nobody's touching them. No, they're not allowed to come out of there. No, it's done, done. Now, what I use for my page protectors is I absolutely, I exclusive, exclusively use We Are Memory Keepers page protectors and also to We Are Memory Keepers albums. Now, I will say this, and I'll get on my soapbox for just one minute. This was before... We are memory keepers sold to American Crafts. I'm going to just hit another light. Lord, there's two for two. So I will have to say I cannot speak for the quality of We Are Memory Keepers albums and page protectors now because I have quite the inventory of them when I knew they were going out of business. Yes, I snagged a bunch. Um, but I'm hoping that the quality has not changed too much. And if anybody knows the answer to that, if you have recently bought We Are Memory Keepers page protectors and also their albums, these are like the faux leather type ones. These are the more expensive ones because I have went through many, many albums and these are the ones that have held up the best and so over the years that's what I have converted to now these do have heavy grade uh, corner protectors and that is super great but you have to be very very careful because these will scratch up furniture quicker than you can blink an eye so you have to be careful of this heavy duty uh, corner photo corner photo corner uh, protective corner absolutely great for your album but it's terrible for your furniture so you really have to pay attention and also too small kids can get scratched on them so you have to be careful okay that was just a little bit of chit chat but we're talking about layout lunch date yes okay so now what i will do is i will come back and i will have these all put away so you can actually see my goal being done and then we're going to talk about uh the journaling and why it causes problems for us and maybe a couple little tips how we can tackle it uh, in the up upcoming months okay so hang on for part two Okay, so let's get back to part two of our layout lunch date because lunchtime will be over before we know it. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so here is a quick little flip through of those uh, layouts I had showed you that was part of my goal. And I wanted to show that when I put layouts away, I absolutely keep in mind what may be coming up. And so some of my one page layouts, I will make sure the back stays empty because I may be moving these around. And over the years, I've learned to do that. Because I would much rather move page protectors around, like this two-page spread, which I'll talk about that in a minute. How about this one? Okay, this two-page spread, I made sure it was facing this way. And then on the back, of course, I have 
back to back fall. Okay. Let me see if I can show another one. Oh, I have that one in Christmas. Okay. So on some of my two page spreads, okay, this is an example. I made sure that on the backs, there is nothing because I don't know quite yet what's where this is going to land in the in my album so I would much rather move page protectors than to move my layouts and so when I'm putting a two page away a lot of times unless I already have the layouts before or after it completed I will absolutely leave both sides empty and that way it's easy for me to move that two page layout if that makes sense now let's go back to that one I showed you that I want to tell you about the insert and so this is what it looks like in my album and I'll put this so it's not so crooked here and I'll probably get a glare sorry about that and so this is what it looks like so here is my left page here is my right 12 by 12 but then right here is my insert so this is what you see you see this and a little bit of this you flip it over and then you still got another spread so if I look if you look at this when I flip this six by 12 over, okay, here's the six by 12, it ends right here. And here's the spray, spray, 12 by 12 spread. Look what I have here on the left. I still have my title, okay? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yes, because I still have the date here with this. I flip it over and now I got the date again. So I love doing inserts and we'll talk more about that. But that is what it looks like. I have my 17 layouts in here, all completed, done. Pat myself on the back, I got that done. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, our layouts. Oh, and you know, I just got a question not so long ago. Remember, I was talking about that Thanksgiving spread, and I said about how uh, the story about my husband always calls our turkey the yard bird. And so someone had asked me, how do I keep track of all of my story ideas and layout ideas? And so I always have a notebook of some sort going on. And so what I do in my notebook is I absolutely have a few pages, and this is exactly what it says, layout slash story ideas, and then I just keep a list. And so when I was done with that filming, I pulled it out, and I put on here yard bird Thanksgiving I need to tell the story so that is how I keep track of my story ideas and uh, just notes up on notes and uh, on notes yes <laughs> yes I always have notes running through my head hence the reason I always need a notebook by my side okay now let's talk about layouts here unfinished layouts specifically yeah let's talk about that <laughs> okay and why they give us a problem okay now when I had talked about in the last layout lunch date, when we talked about setting up designated areas, I will tell you this has really helped me. And then our next layout lunch date, I'm going to show you how I broke down my unfinished layouts. But right now, today, we're going to briefly talk about why unfinished layouts causes a problem and why they're unfinished. And specifically for me, and I think for a lot of us, you have to think of what season you're in. And I know for me, when I'm in a certain season where I'm sad about something, I have a hard time journaling about that. And so I have to let that, I maybe can do the layout, but the journaling, I have to let go for a few more months or maybe sometimes a year. Okay. I remember when my daughter left for college and I was working on my month in review pages, I absolutely stuck there. I could not journal about that. And it was about two years after that till I could sit down and fully journal about when she left for college I still uh, I still get choked up about it so that's why it was so hard for me to sit down here and journal and I wanted to talk about this speak and this is another one this is one of these layouts when she was little and I'm reflecting back to that time you know I'm still going through the empty nest syndrome yeah uh -huh away the tissues baby yeah and so I have to be in a certain mood a certain frame of mind to sit down and journal about these type of things and we had talked about this recently among a few of my subscribers where people have passed in their lives and how do you sit down and talk about that journaling and we will have a video coming up where I'm going to be talking about how we scrap how we scrapbook through difficult times so that video will coming up I, I'm I'm probably going to put it up before Christmas because, you know, people uh, battle with depression over Christmas. But, you know, that's another story for another day. Okay, let's keep on cracking. Okay, see? I get sidetracked. Sorry. I went from empty nest to, you know, crying and boo-hooing. And, okay. So, yes. What happens is, in a short nutshell, is that there's two parts of our brain. Okay? A left side of our brain and the right side of our brain. And so, when we're sitting down and we are working on layouts and we're getting creative and we're playing with color and mood and feel and paper and supplies and just all that stuff that we love. Okay? Then that's the creative part. That's the right side of our brain. Then what happens is when you have to sit down and you have to think and you have to process and you have to analyze and you have to come up with 
correct dates, that's the left side of our brain, okay? That's the logic side. And so that's why when I say I'm not in the right frame of mind to sit down and journal, that's exactly what I mean. Because in essence, and this is true story, it takes two parts of our brain to do to scrapbook. On the right side is the creative part. On the left side of our brain is the logic and the thinking. And that's when we come up with all of our English and our uh, logistics as far as uh, the dates and things like that. So it does take two parts of our brain. It's not just the creative part. We also have to have the logic part. And I think that's why a lot of people struggle with the journaling on pages because you simply just don't want to do it. It takes brain power, baby. And so, of course, I'm left-handed. And in the left-handed world, we have a joke that says, you know, we're left-handed, but um, we're always in the right frame of mind because they say you're, when you're left-handed, your impulses come from the right side of your brain and vice versa if you're right-handed. I'm not too sure about that, but I do know for a fact that when we're sitting down and scrapbooking and we're getting crafty and we're playing with colors and we're playing with alphas and we're playing with embellishments, that's the creative part. That's the right side of our brain. But then <laughs> when you get to the point where you have to sit and think about it, what was the date? What was the place? What do I want to say? I want to be accurate. What would, you know, that's the logic part. And that comes from the left side of our brain. Okay. So there is a difference and that's why it creates problem because it's work. <laughs> It's not the fun part. And that is why we have piles upon piles upon piles of unfinished layouts because it's definitely taking the opposite part of our brain to do that part. And so that's why it's a struggle because I find for me that when I sit down and I start to journal on pages, I get into a rhythm and I get into a rhyme. And why is that? It's because I'm using that left side of the brain for all of this, okay? I'm not no longer being creative. I'm now getting into the logic. I'm now getting into the analytics. When was the date? What was the time? What was the place? I'm getting the right information. What was the trip? When was the trip? So that is why. <laughs> that is the piece of the puzzle. It takes, honestly, two sides of the brain to scrapbook. You need the right side for the creative, and then the left side to get everything accurate and get the date and information. So we'll talk more about unfinished layouts in our next layout lunch date as far as how I separated them in my designated area to help with this left side of the brain thinking when it comes to working on our pages and journaling because it does truly take <laughs> The left side of your brain to come up with it. So that's that's why it's hard for us. It's not the fun part. It's the hard part. And that is why a lot of us will sit here and this is me. I'll sit here, do a page, do a page, do a page. And then I just put them all in a pile. And I think, okay, especially for this one on the bottom. I don't know if I showed this, this one on the bottom. Okay. This was a challenge I did, uh, from Kate and Jess from the Scrappy Sisters. I will have their video linked below and I have this, it's all done. I had fun playing with it, but inside I have a lot of personal journaling I need to do. <sighs> I just have not done it because I don't want to sit down and think about it. And so that's the left side of the brain the logic. Okay. So the right side of the brain, boy, I was snapping getting it done because that's the fun part. Okay. So that is why journaling is hard and why it takes more brain power. It's because it's the different side of your brain that's doing it. Okay. So, but in our next layout lunch date, we're going to spend more time and I'm going to show you how I broke down my unfinished layouts. And I think it will help this process go faster because like I said, when I get into the rhythm and the rhyme of a uh, journaling, I seem, if I do it in batches, it seems to be easier for me. And that's what we're talking about. So again, unfinished layouts, yeah, it's not your fault. <laughs> it's your brain. <laughs> that's what we're going to blame on, right? Okay. So that is all I have for this layout lunch date. And in a few weeks, probably after the holiday, after Thanksgiving, the holiday, we will talk about our next layout lunch date. So what can you do in the meantime? Well, you can definitely start working on those goals, set forth your goal. Maybe you just need to set an area where you want to put your layouts away, where you need layouts. To, that needs finished, maybe just set up a couple areas and then also to set forth a little goal as to what you want to tackle. Maybe it's just simply writing a plan. For me, what am I going to do? Well, I have the go-to series coming up, so I know that's going to take some time. So I'm definitely going to set the goal of seven and seven again. I honestly think I can handle that. I can put away seven more layouts and I can find seven layouts that, um, that just need a simple little journaling. I think I can do that. So I'm going to again do my seven and seven. We'll see how that goes. But if you don't make your goal, don't beat yourself up. 
next time you can just set forth another goal okay so that's all i have for layout lunch date yes uh i hope you had a good lunch and didn't just eat a donut no okay that's all i have for today come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna learn bye